everyone, welcome back to my channel. So we are moving and this is gonna be the next video in the decluttering series. I need to downsize, minimize. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a makeup declutter. I think it's been a year, year and a half since I did my last declutter. I'll leave it linked. I always point to the wrong side and you guys always notice and I never know which side I need to point to, but it'll be around here and in the description. But since that video, my makeup collection has grown a bit since then. I have purchased some things myself. I've also been sent things in PR. And to be honest, I just haven't really thought too hard about getting rid of it, but now I kind of have to. We don't have a crazy amount of storage in the new place, so a lot of this I just need to get rid of and sort of whittle my collection down to my favorites, which I kind of already know what they're gonna be. So let's get into the declutter. And fair warning, this is gonna be a longer video, so get a coffee, get a tea, sit back, relax. A lot of you guys said you really like it when I break down and explain why I liked versus did not like some of the makeup. There's a lot to go through, so let's make it a long one. Who doesn't love a long YouTube video? I think they're fun. Okay, let's go into my current makeup collection. This is the current sort of storage solution. This holds, this is not all of my makeup. This holds things like hair tools are Dyson pieces. It's kind of messy in here. This here is my whole makeup collection. I also have a everyday makeup drawer that I have in the bedroom. I'll show you that too. But we have things like my makeup brushes over here. This is like some PR powders, eyeshadow palettes, blushes, what else? Lipstick and lip products. These are my nail polishes. So a lot of this is already expired. I haven't used it in a long time. I've found new products to replace others with. So I'm just gonna really call this down because in the new place, the only space I really have, at least that I can think about right now, is gonna be under the sink and in our medicine cabinet. So a lot of this I really just gotta whittle down and figure out a storage solution for this because we're also not quite sure yet if we're even going to be taking this dresser. I don't know if, it, if there's like a law of physics where essentially if you have the space you will eventually fill it. So I want to make my space for my makeup collection a lot more constrained than this. Keep it a lot tighter, a lot neater, and just a lot more edited down to what I actually use. Let's start going through this. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys down on this desk. We're gonna set the camera up so it is overhead and we're gonna go through and get rid of my makeup collection. We're gonna go through this and then I'll also show you what's in my everyday makeup bag. These are the products that I am using the most often. So I think what I'm gonna do is take everything out of this makeup bag and then sort everything by category and I'll let you know what's keeping and what's going. So this is everything I would say I use for my foundational base. I don't really wear foundation per se except I did recently start using this Westman Atelier one on occasion, but in general, I really only wear concealer on an everyday basis. And it's really only been recently that I started playing around with tinted moisturizer and foundation. So a lot of this I do keep in my regular makeup bag, but there are a few things that I think I will get rid of because I just haven't used them in a really long time. And despite them not taking up a lot of space, I just, I don't know. Uh, why why have them be there? So the things that I'm going to get rid of are my Jones Road the face pencil. So these are marketed as a face crayon, kind of really old school and pretty fun to use. These are meant to be a concealer and color corrector. They're actually quite a lot creamier than they would seem. They seem like they would be really dry, but they're actually not. My only thing is that I just really haven't reached for them at all. My favorite concealer right now instead is this combination of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which is my holy grail. I always go back to this one. And then I also just recently bought a mini of the Kosas Concealer. A lot of you guys 
recommended this concealer. I just don't use it that much. Um, so I think I'm just gonna get rid of these. I ended up getting a mini of the Kosas and getting a mini was recommended to me because the only thing about this is that a lot of people complain that it turns, that it smells quite rancid after a short amount of time. And I think it is because of the sunflower oil in this concealer. I've also heard slash read that even though it smells off, it's not necessarily off. So I don't know. Um, but I think because of that, the mini is the way to go. RMS Beauty has been one of my favorite makeup brands for years. It's an extremely lightweight coverage and feels a little bit oily. It would be similar to the Glossier Stretch Concealer if I were to offer you a similar comparison. So I really like this one for no makeup makeup days if I just want to sort of correct and brighten up my face just a little bit. So I'm going to hold on to it because I do like it and it's a great size for travel. Okay, next are the Westman Atelier products. I picked these up in the Sephora sale because I've just been curious about them for quite a long time. I ordered the foundation stick in their lightest shade, 0.5, so quite fair, and her Vital Skin Care Complexion Drops in the fairest shade as well. I am a pale girly. I like the foundation drops a lot more than the foundation. The foundation I've been sort of using as almost like a spot concealer. And if you're going to be blending this, I don't have a beauty blender or anything, but I've been using the Merit blending foundation brush to blend this in. And I think it just creates a really nice seamless finish. I actually did end up splurging on the Westman Atelier brush because I don't know why. I just <laughs> figured that they would work best together, but I find this brush does not do as good of a job as the Merit one. So this one is really nice and densely packed. It's very soft and it seems to have a little bit more of a rounding in the way the bristles are shaped and arranged, whereas the Westman Atelier one, it's very, very soft, but it definitely creates more of a flat surface. But I find this one sort of drags everything around when it comes to this foundation stick compared to giving a really nice blend with the Merit brush. So this combination is really, really great. Really, really love it. Kind of more for every day though, I will use the Atelier Dew Drops and I find this just evens out my skin tone so beautifully. It's very, very dewy, very hydrating. It contains a lot of oil. I wouldn't say it gives me coverage, but it just sort of corrects it. It just lightens it a little bit without looking too heavy or cakey or holding on to any spots. The other thing about this though, I will say is if you have oily skin and you don't like that sort of shiny, dewy look, then you might not like this. But if you're dry to normal to even combination, then I think you might really enjoy this one. It's just a really nice, natural, no makeup, makeup kind of look. I like this. I use it at the end of my makeup or when I want a little refresh. It has a nice fine mist. And finally, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I don't really get what this is. It's not a foundation, it's not a highlighter. It's supposed to be like a base to give you that nice dewy glow. And it does that. I like it. I like this stuff. It blends really well. In terms of the price, I don't know if it's worth it. I heard e.l.f. has a similar dupe at a fraction of the cost. So if you were curious about that, then I would say go for the e.l.f. one. But yeah, basically all of this stuff we are keeping. You are coming with us to the apartment. Okay, getting into bronzers, I pretty much know immediately what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. So the first thing that immediately I think I will be letting go of is the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. Honestly, it translates very warm on me and I find it looks quite muddy. It does not blend very well and it dries down really, really fast. So you see, you can even see how sort of patchy it's drying down on my hand. I find it really difficult to work with and it's just a little bit too warm for me. Actually, since we're here, I have the sort of trio set here and I don't really like any of these. The highlighter is a bit too dark for me and again, it like grabs onto dry patches on my skin. It does not blend. Same with the blush, just not a fan. I'm gonna have to get rid of these. This I have had for years. Look how gross and lived in and used this is. This is the Charlotte Tilbury, what is this called? 
Film Star Bronze and Glow. I don't even know if they make this packaging like this anymore. This is quite old. Honestly, I just haven't been reaching for my powder products that much. This is really, really old. This is like over five, six years old. Let it go. All right, so clearly there are a lot of Jones Road products here because I actually really do like Jones Road. I love Bobbi Brown and I really get along with a lot of their formulations and use their stuff in my everyday routine, which you'll see. These are new from Jones Road. They are their new gel bronzer. Um, I have not tried these. They sent me two different colors, medium and light. I think I am just going to give the medium away. I am very, very pale, very fair. So I can give this to a friend who is a little bit darker in complexion than me. I also checked online and it does have quite a lot of really good reviews, so I'm curious about it. And it's meant to be very, very sheer and just give you a nice little bit of color. I mean, let's just try it out right here. It reminds me of like the Glossier cloud paint a little bit, and it gives like a nice little sheen. See how my skin is sort of glowing against the light like that? Okay, interesting. A couple years ago, Jones Road also came out with their Miracle Bomb. This is their bronze one, and I have clearly not used it. So the way you're supposed to use the Miracle Bomb, if you're curious about how um, Hannah Louise Poston, friend of mine here on YouTube, and I know a lot of you guys are a fan of hers, has a really good review of the Jones Road Miracle Bomb. So check out that video and I'll leave it linked below if you're curious. And these are sort of very similar products. I like this one better. So I just don't need the, I don't need this taking up extra space. It's looking a little nasty, but I really, really like this product. Don't let that deter you. It is the, the Chanel Le Beige. Look, this looks surprisingly orange on my skin, but it blends in so beautifully and does not look orange once you have it on your face. It will last you forever too. Okay, so out of bronzers, here is what is staying. Here's what's going. Okay, getting into blushes and palettes. I have a lot of things here that I definitely am going to get rid of and it's simply because they are very, very old or they just, I reach for other things more often. So right off the bat, I'm going to be decluttering this Tower 28 Lip to Cheek Blush. It is in the color Magic Hour and there's nothing wrong with this. I really, really like it. It's a very, very balmy product and I just think it's a little bit too warm toned for me in terms of a blush. If you want that sort of cute, sun-kissed, burnt sort of look, but in like a effortless kind of way, then I think you may really like this. I haven't really gone for this one that much. I think it'll look nice on my sister though, so I'm gonna give that to her. Next, I'm going to be getting rid of just because, ooh, look, there's like a hair in this one. <laughs> These two cream blushes from Minori. Minori, I love this brand. I know the owner, Anastasia. She and I kind of have similar stories where she also went from shopaholic to minimalist. She became a certified KonMari consultant and she started this sort of minimalist makeup brand. So. It's meant to be, you know, your sort of fundamental products, very easy to use, creamy, blendable, um, and they have a lot of really great environmental initiatives too. I think the company is now plastic negative, things like that. So really, really great company. I will leave it linked down below. I used to have a discount code with them. I'll see if I still do. If I do, I will leave it linked. This one is Scarlet, so it is like a really nice red color. And then this is Dusty Rose. You can see they really look like their namesake. Very, very nice, very blendable, very creamy. The expiry on these says 12 months. I've had these for at least three years, so I think that is the only reason. I feel bad letting these go, but it is time. So this blush I have been wearing every single day since I got it. I have really been enjoying it, and it is the Merit Flush Balm Blush in Stockholm. So a really nice cool toned pink gives a really, really nice kiss of color on the cheeks. It gives you a beautiful glow. It's super blendable. So this was sent to me, but I've really been enjoying Merit a lot. And this one I am definitely going to be keeping. All right, I'm kind of torn about this one. This is the Rare Beauty Blush in Happy. Obviously this is a super viral blush. I really, really like the color. Again, it's a nice cool tone pink. It is so freaking pigmented, 
but look how it blends out. Like, wow, I think it's just, you know, it's super easy to work with, but I don't really reach for it that often. I don't know why. I think I prefer a stick kind of cream blush as opposed to these sort of doe foot applicators. But with Rare Beauty, things I can appreciate about them is like she has this really great accessible packaging. Individuals with disabilities or arthritis, for example, can open the packaging and use the packaging with a lot more ease. Her products are great. She's got a great shade range. I don't know much about Selena Gomez, but I do really like this brand. Would definitely repurchase, would definitely recommend, but this is just something that I haven't been wearing quite a lot, so I think I'm gonna pass this on. All right, so clearly I have a type when it comes to blush shades. I love a cool tone pink. This one's super tiny and compact, and I think it's just nice to have an option in a powder, so I will keep. I'm gonna keep the Jones Road Lip and Cheek Balm. I don't know what I did to the top of it. It is super mangled, but it otherwise blends really, really well. It's got a lot of really nice pigment to it. So if I'm in the mood for something a little more pigmented, I will reach for this one. So I'm gonna keep that. And this one from Westman Atelier is new. I also bought it in the Sephora sales. So this essentially I think is replacing the Dusty Rose shade from Minori that I am going to be letting go. This is again, another really beautiful, creamy, very pigmented formula. And it, I think it's just a color that I'll be wearing a little bit more in the fall and winter, whereas I really like these sort of brighter shades for spring and summer. But look at that pigmentation and that blend. Westman Atelier, I don't know. She's expensive, but she's nice. And finally, this Hourglass palette. If you've seen any of my makeup declutters, she's been here in every single one. I've barely made a dent in it, but it's still really pigmented, really blendable. And I find in general, I use this pink blush right here quite a lot. And this highlighter, as well as these two finishing powders, it just gives like a really nice blur to your skin. It kind of makes everything look a little bit poreless. The bronzer is a little meh. I think it's still a little bit warm for me, but this blush is great. Um, and this just makes you look so glowy and airbrushed. I love Hourglass products. So I think overall this is a really good mix of blushes. They are all in similar shades, but I think it just means I kind of know what color works for me. Not looking for too, too much variety, but I do like to sort of switch these up from day to day depending on what my mood is, how my skin is doing. So I think that's pretty good. So getting rid of these keeping these. All right, next let's get into highlighters. The one I'm using the most right now is this guy from Merit. This is the Day Glow Highlighting Balm in Kava. That's what it, Kava, Kava? So it's this really nice like iridescent, I guess champagne-y kind of highlighter. It goes on very, very balmy, almost wet feeling to give you that wet look, but it's not sticky and it blends so beautifully and just look at that shine. That is just stunning. I wouldn't say it lasts like all day long, but I think it sort of fades away really beautifully where you still get this really nice everyday glow. And I've just been loving this one. Merit is really killing it for me. The Living Luminizer, this is the second time I bought it and I kept my old one for way too long, but I think it lasts a lot longer than the packaging says, in my opinion. It gives such a nice lit from within glow. Perfect for like no makeup makeup. You can put it on your eyes if you want a sort of glossy, glassy look on the eyes. I love this stuff. It's one of my favorite products, which is why I bought it a second time. So keeping. One that I think I will be letting go of is this Jones Road Miracle Balm in Eau Natural. So the Eau Natural near Miracle Balm is just meant to be essentially that, an Eau Naturelle sort of highlighter and balm. You can use it as like skincare if you want, um, although I feel like it's a little bit sticky and occlusive for that, so I don't know if I would really recommend. I've heard Bobbi Brown also say that you can use this to like slick back your hair if you want to, so it's fairly multi-purpose. It doesn't have any sort of glitter or anything in there, and it definitely has like a different texture than Vaseline. Like it definitely stays on your skin in a different way, otherwise I would just say use Vaseline. 
um, but I don't think you'll get the same effect. However, I think I will get rid of this because I just don't reach for it. I'm not, even though it has potential to be like a multi-use product, multi-purpose, I just know I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna let it go. This next one is from Westman Atelier and I guess I just really wanted to try a lot of her makeup line because I was so impressed with a lot of her other products. This highlighter honestly is kind of a miss for me. She does have a few different shades and this peachy champagne -y one seemed like the best fit for me and my skin tone. It's not glittery and there aren't like chunks in it, but I feel like on the skin it looks glittery. It's really strange. You know, it's a very nice again balmy formula obviously i am drawn to that but i wasn't super thrilled with this one so i don't know i'll probably give it away just kind of a bummer because even the minis are expensive say sai the say glowy super gel i bought this to mix in with some of the tinted moisturizers that i've been using lately this is just really nice you can mix it in with your foundations you can wear it as a highlighter it blends really nice it doesn't feel chunky it doesn't get dry i haven't used it too too much i only recently purchased this um, but i've been really enjoying it so far so i will keep and so here we are left with the highlighter collection okay when it comes to eyes there's not much to say here this is my entire eyeshadow collection so these two are from well, everything's from Jones Road. So these two are the Just a Sec eyeshadow. So these are more iridescent. I find they, they are a really nice topper or just on their own to give a, um, a sort of a wet look to the eye. I really like the brown one. You can just put it on with your fingers. It feels kind of like bouncy and a little bit spongy in the pan, but it's not like a gel or it's not creamy. It's a really strange texture. It's really quite buildable and just gives like a really nice wet look to the eyes that I really like. And then these are two eyeshadows that they kind of came with like a set that when I first bought the Miracle Bombs together, it came with like an eyeshadow and a concealer. So um, cool tone eyeshadows are definitely the name of the game for me. I find warm tones look make me look a little sick and ill. This one is in the color Ash and this one is in Smoky Gray. Both of these look I think really nice on my eyes with my coloring. This one you can also use as a bit of an eyeliner if you want or even in your eyebrows. And I just like that they don't take up a lot of space. So I'm just gonna be keeping all of these. These are all the mascaras I have right now. Currently I have the Jones Road mascara going. I find this to be a very nice everyday mascara. It doesn't transfer, it doesn't flake. I like the curl shape of the wand. Uh, definitely would repurchase. Once this is done, I'm going to be moving on to the Hourglass Caution Mascara. I've purchased this before. I really, really like it. I don't, I'm not going to open it because she's a fresh one and it just means I'm going to have to get her started. But I find this is really nice and lengthening. It doesn't flake and it's got really, really chic packaging. Never tried this clean lash from Merit. So let me know if you like it. This was sent to me and I have two backups of my all time favorite mascara. I've said it for years. I have used it for years. The Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara, keeping all of those. These are all the face powders that I own. Um, I really only use face powder when I'm filming videos just to get rid of some shine. I don't really use it in my everyday to set my face or to look very poreless unless I'm using the ones in this hourglass palette. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder. I actually really like this a lot. It's nice and compact, but for some reason I just felt compelled to try this powder from Kosas, and I actually really do like it better. It is the Cloud Set Powder in Airy. This is the fairest shade. It really does a nice job at mattifying and sort of airbrushing everything. Um, both are good. I'm a little bit torn. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe pile. And then these were sent to me again from Jones Road. Um, this is their Tinted Face Powder. The colored ones are supposed to be color correcting. Um, I don't know why I chose pink. I don't remember. I think it was just because I'm fair and that's what was recommended. I have no idea. I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna keep this one just to give it a try and I'll let you guys know how it is. 
All right, so here's everything that's in my lip collection. So right away, I am going to declutter this Minori lip gloss. It's just a bit old, although I do really like it. Um, it's got a nice sort of pigment to it. This one from Jones Road, I thought I would really like, but I do not like this at all. It is their cool gloss. It is really, really pigmented, almost too pigmented for me when it comes to a gloss. It's very sticky. Um, but if you want that kind of like high shine sort of va-va-voom look, this would look really cool as like a topper over a red lip, but I've just never done that and I just feel like it would get everywhere, so I'm gonna get rid of it. This NARS Red Square lipstick, I really like. I've liked it for years. It's quite an orangey red though, and I don't really think it's my red anymore. Um, I think I definitely fare better with like a blue toned or a neutral red. I used to wear red lip a lot, and I just haven't in a long time, so I think this one can go. The Ilia lip glosses are amazing. I love them. They're super pigmented and they're just not sticky at all. This is the shade Petals and this one is Tahiti. There's the swatch of the Ilias. And if I have a gloss on in my videos, it's either these Ilia glosses or the Dior lip lip glow oils. Okay, look, these I really want to keep. I really like them, but the problem with these packaging is it leaks. Look at that. So it leaks everywhere in my purse. Uh, the only time I, so the only time that I can really wear these is when I am filming and they do give like a really nice glossy bitten look to your lips. They have a nice color to them, a nice pigmentation. It definitely does translate on the lips. So it's not just like a clear gloss. There's definitely a little bit of color there that you get, but the packaging is just not good and they leak everywhere. So I don't know. One that is not leaking on me that I very much enjoy is the tinted lip oil from Merit. I don't know if you have to like shake these because you can see the color sort of separating here. Maybe because I've been storing these flat, but they're definitely separating in two and I don't know if that's supposed to happen. So it's like a barely there color. And this one really is just more meant to provide like a shine on your lips as opposed to any color. I don't know why it's two-toned, but I still like it. I finally bought a new MAC Ruby Woo because I think it is a red that works well on me. It is a nice blue toned red. This is a brand new tube. So I'm gonna keep her. And in which case I'm gonna keep my MAC Cherry lip pencil too. This YSL lipstick, I don't even know if the lipstick's good anymore. Sort of neutrally bluish red. The packaging's engraved with my late dog's name, Chica, so keeping. This Chanel lipstick I got in a gift bag. Rouge Allure lipstick in 158. It's a nice dusty rose color. Very, very creamy. Yeah, I like it. Okay, fine, we'll keep it. And I like that packaging. You like push it in, very luxe. This is an Ilia lipstick that eh, I haven't really worn. True red. It's nice, um, I'll probably give it away though. This is Clinique Black Honey, and I love this. I truly think it is a universally flattering shade. It's a lot more subtle than it looks in the tube, and is just really, really nice and flattering. Clinique having a comeback, who knew? I am not a beauty guru, I don't think I'm very good at makeup, but I do get a lot of questions about what I'm wearing on my lips when I film my videos. And a lot of times it is this combination. So I don't even know if they make this anymore. I've had this for years. It's the Ultra Shine Lip Color from Tom Ford. So it's a bit more of a glossy kind of lipstick. Definitely has some pigment to it, but it's still quite sheer in this dusty rose color. And what I do is I will line my lips with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk and I'll dab on a little bit of the pillow talk into the center of my lips. It's this really nice sort of like pinky brown neutral color. And then I will mix the Tom Ford on top and just sort of dab it in. So it creates this really nice sort of like pinky nude your lips but better glossy natural color. And then when my lips start to feel dry, I will put the Dior on top, but any sort of lip gloss will really do but this is sort of the lip combination that I wear the most when I have a natural lip on the channel. These lip gloss sticks from Hourglass are really, really nice. I love this pinky nude one in the color Mist, 
And I liked it so much that I decided to try the tinted red in Thrill. And I think it's because I'm just not gravitating towards really solid pigmented lip colors right now. I like just sort of a kiss of color, something really easy. So I, and I really like that the hydrating effect of a gloss. Really, really nice, not too pigmented, but they definitely offer a little bit of a boost in color on the lip and they're just really nice and shiny not sticky, great formula, chic packaging. I've really been enjoying these. So I knew we weren't gonna get too far in terms of the lip collection, but I think this is a really solid one. So this is the final makeup collection after it's been decluttered. These are just some backups. And here are my brushes. I didn't really declutter any of my brushes because I do use them for different reasons, for different times. So this is all here. And then this is the final sort of interchangeable makeup collection. So I have my blushes, eyeshadows, my palette, a bunch of different lip options. And then in here is my everyday makeup that you guys saw at the beginning. So this is kind of what I'm using sort of on an everyday regular basis. And, and then I'll just switch things out as I feel like it. So I think this is a pretty good collection that I've whittled down and I will be able to store it very nicely in the new apartment. There's not a lot of extra clutter. So I'm really satisfied with this. Let me know how you think I did. So that's it for today's makeup declutter. I think this is a really good start and I'm excited to get into the new place and start organizing everything. And that's also gonna have to be when the round two happens because that's when we're really gonna get a sense of what fits and what doesn't. If you like this video, it would mean so much to me if you gave it a thumbs up. It is the best way you can help support my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd love to have you. We're so close to 200K, let's get there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.